G'day, I'm Steve. Working Master Class, and welcome to my workshop. This is episode four of a six part project on making the hexagonal box with marquetry inlay and veneer work. If you haven't joined us so far, please go back and have a look at the earlier episodes, or if you're keeping up to date, what I've done this is quite a large episode, so I've actually broken it down into two parts part A and part B, and I've uploaded them both at the same time. Part A will finish off the building of the leaf I started in episode three and take you right through the scorching technique and the joining. And then part B of episode four will actually start to inlay it into that oval shape and also put it into the box top. So welcome to the workshop. Hope you enjoy these coming ideas and you get right into the project. So sit back and enjoy part A of episode four. Now we've got four pieces and if we put it together, it does sort of look like a leaf, but it lacks a lot of definition. So how we give that definition is we cast shadows as in real life, when this leaf curls over like that, what it'll actually do if the light is coming from this side, it will cast a shadow over the stem. So what we've got to decide is what side you want the light coming from, and then we'll put shadows where the light would cast a shadow. And that will give a real three dimensional effect. And how we do that is quite simply, Get a gas burner. Now this is an old jam tin. I've just cut it off, what's that, about an inch and a half up, and then peened over the inside so it's not uh, dangerous or sharp. And the magic ingredient, no, it's not tomato paste. It's actually white sand. Oh, I used to use black sand. But somebody told me it's radioactive, so I don't use it anymore. Bob's just walked in. And I now use this white sand. What this is, is the sand you put in the bottom of a budgerigar cage. Or if you've got pet birds and you get that white sand for the bottom or aquariums, it's a very, very fine grain white sand. Fill it up as I've done there. Place it on the gas burner. Turn it on. Start it up. And we'll now heat that until the sand gets really, really hot. There's a few other things you'll need if you want to do the scorching technique with marquetry. One is a good pair of tweezers. Although I much prefer, these tweezers work when you close them together. So you pick something up, you have to close your thumb and forefinger. That gets a bit tiring if you've got a big, a lot of marquetry to do. The other ones are these reverse uh, tweezers, you actually squeeze them to open them and then they shut automatically. Or, once again, going down the surgical line, you can get these clamps, surgical clamps, that have got little teeth on them. So you can actually pick something up, hold it, and it won't let go. I find them a little bit clumsy. The uh, for me, I like these reverse tweezers that you squeeze to open and they hold nice and tight. And the other thing you need is a spoon. Now what I've got is just a spoon, turned a little handle for it, and that's what I hold the hot sand in while I'm scorching timber. I'll know when we're hot enough when this actually starts to scorch. It's also good to know that 
different veneers, scorch at different rates. Even though this isn't hot enough yet to scorch this Queensland walnut, this piece of rock maple, most definitely it will burn. If you look there, you can just see on the edges, it's starting to darken. So if I left it in there, count to 10, you'll see now that it really is nice and dark. Be very careful, this is very, very hot, and you do have to have your wits about you. Now to look at the design we have here, we've got to decide which side the light's going to be coming from. I like the idea of the light coming from this direction. That way, darker pencil, we have the light coming from this direction. As this leaf falls over, it's going to leave a shadow on the leaf on the inside. And the stem, the main woody part of the leaf, the light will be hitting that and also casting a shadow on this part. So what I have to now burn is in here where this part sits and all the way along this part. To do the larger bits, I use a spoon, get a spoonful of hot sand and then just push the piece I want scorched into it. Now you can see there that I just started to scorch the edge. I'll give it another go because what happens, once you've scorched it, it might look really dark, but when you clean it up and you sand it, you'll lose a lot of that. So I always like to go a little bit deeper than what I want in the finished job. If you can, you get the sand from the bottom and that's going to be hotter. I can see the timber starting to smoke now, so that's fine. Now, this piece here, I just want it in this part. So again, get some sand from the bottom and just ever so gently scorch that part. And where the twig's going to be coming in, I want to scorch this part just up here. And there we have it. Turn this off. Be very careful of this. It is extremely hot. And do not do what I do and put it down on the plastic mat because it'll melt it. So put it up out of the way where you're not going to touch it and no one else is going to touch it the cooker up and move it to a safe place. Now it's time to put it all together. Same as before, I'll use Aquit here. If I was doing a big job, I'd most likely use hide glue, but this is a little job. Put a little bit of glue there. Get some sticky tape. Lay it down on your green mat, cut it up into little four millimeter squares. Now pick up, just dust the sand off lightly. Be very careful with these delicate edges as well. A little bit of glue on the end of the knife and then just Put glue down the edge. Now, sometimes I'll double glue this, and if it's too delicate, I won't risk it. I'll only glue one side of the job because it's only there to hold it together while the piece dries. Match that all in. Sticky tape. A 
right down the bottom. Now the piece is curled over again. Bit of glue down the edge. Put that into place. And there we have it. One little leaf. Very shortly will inlay into the box. Now what I'll do a bit Trusty old wrap, pop that there, and put one of these heavy blocks over the top, and I'll let that sit for about half an hour to dry. Actually, it's been a little bit more than half an hour. We've had huge storms here, and I can't hear a thing with the rain on the roof. So it's actually the next day, and we've still got a bit of rain, so that's the background noise. And I haven't got the stained t-shirt on as I started this video with, because quite frankly, it's too cold. So I'm sorry if you'd want a continuity, it's not there. I'm stuck with this t-shirt, but I'm warm. Okay, now I took that um, piece of leaf out from the press and it glued up lovely, as you can see. But what I wasn't happy with was the overall shape. So I've sculpted it by taking this piece away here and just round it off any sharp corners. A great way of rounding off is if you have a carving chisel. Now, these are reasonably expensive, but they're absolutely great to have. I do a lot of carving, so obviously I've got a few, but they are terrific for marquetry. This is a, a 516 or a 520, 530. It's got a nice gentle curve there, and it's just what's needed if you've got any sharp edges and you just want to round them off, just pop it on there, rockwards, backwards and forwards, and it really sculpts the leaf into a nice, more natural shape. So that's what I've done. Well, that's the end of episode four, part A. In episode B, I actually take that leaf and inlay it into an oval-shaped background and put it onto the box lid. So I hope you enjoy episode B and continue with the project. Oh, 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 oh,